Hey guys and welcome back to an amazing new video. In this short video you will on the other hand get a lot of information about Jetpack Compose modifiers because what I will show you is custom modifiers. So how can you create your very own custom modifiers that you can very easily reuse in your whole project. So we all know how important modifiers in Jetpack Compose are. They are just used to, well, modify our composables, to modify how our composables look like, how they behave and all that stuff that belongs to that. And very often we have common functionality or common behavior that we want to share between different composables. And instead of always adding the same sequence of modifiers to these composables, we can also create our very own custom modifiers that we can then just apply to these. So instead of yeah, having a whole chain of modifiers, we are just going to have a single one. And I want to start with something very simple, and that is that we just create a little box here. The modifier for that will be modifier.fillmax size. So we just fill the whole size of our screen just for demo purposes here. And we also say that we align its content in the center of the box. And in here, we're going to have another box where we want to apply our custom modifier to. So let's say we have our modifier here. And yeah, let's just make this a little red circle, for example. So we could say, hey, that's a size of 100 dp and for dp. Then we could say, we want to clip this to a circle shape. So we have a circle. And then we could say, we also give it a background of, let's say, red. This, of course, wouldn't make much sense here in a real project. But let's say you have a project full of red circles. And you would always repeat these lines of code here to clip it first to a circle shape and then color the background uh, in red. And that could, of course, be anything here. So in this simple example, it's just a red circle, but it could be some kind of custom shape you have, some kind of custom behavior, which we will also get you here. So if you have some more complex functionality you want to share with a modifier. But here in this simple example, we just have a, a red circle. And instead of always needing to write these two lines here, let's say we have a project full of red circles, we can also make these a separate modifier by taking this and actually going, yeah, let's say this is some kind of other file, some kind of modifier extension or so, and we can just make, a, make an extension function to the modifier class. So we can say modifier.redball, for example, returns a modifier again, and then we can set this equal to um, modifier, and here we simply paste our two modifiers. And here, this is actually not how it works. Um, so we can say uh, that's equal to modifier because in the end, we already refer to this modifier here. And that is what we need to use. That's also why we get a little warning here or an error rather. So we can simply remove this, remove the first dot here, and then we're good. So we just apply the clipping and then the background to whatever we call this red ball modifier on. Of course, super simple. And I, I'm, I'm sure most of you are already aware that we can do this, but just for demo, we can now say red ball. And if we launch this in our emulator or so, take a look here, then we should be able to see a red ball. And yes, there it is. There's a red ball. I would advise not to hardcode the size here. So we could also say size 100 dp, unless that really is always the same size for all the composables where we apply this red ball. But usually that's not the case. So right now what we created was just a stateless modifier because this modifier will yeah, just apply this sequence of modifiers here for every single composable. There is no value that somehow changes here because it's always a circle shape. It's always red color. But what if we actually have stateful modifiers? So a modifier where a specific value changes. For example, if we want to add a modifier that just adds some kind of animation to our composables so that we can animate our composables just with a single modifier. Then there's of course a value involved that changes over time, which is the value we animate. How can we do that? Because that of course doesn't work with this approach, since then we need some kind of composition context. So that function, that modifier that we create would need to get some kind of reference to the composition context. So it knows when the state changes that the modifier actually also need to be recalculated and yeah, just reassigned. And to be able to achieve that, what we can do is we can also just create an extension function modifier dot, let's say we want to create a rotating animation so we can add this and it will just be an infinite rotating animation for the composable we apply to. So rotating will return a modifier. And this time what we will say is we will set this to composed. So you can see um, the composed function will also return a modifier here. And inside of this Lambda block, we get reference to a modifier. So the difference to do this approach is that with Composed, we effectively get composition context, as I said. So in here, 
when the state changes, we can also change the modifier that this function returns. You can see we get an error here because this function needs to return a modifier. So if we were to say modifier here as, as the last line, you can see the error will be gone. We still get a warning because it says, hey, oh, that's really unnecessary because there is no state involved, no composition context or so involved in this modifier. So it's unnecessary to use this composed function. But what we want to do here is we want to add this context. So we want to have some kind of animation that we apply to the modifier we've, we finally return here. And since we want to have an infinite rotating animation that we can easily apply to all of our composables, we want to set this, or first of all, get a transition element that is equal to remember infinite transition. And then we can have our actual state that gets all the values from this infinite transition. So with this state, we will then update the rotation of the modifier, we will return in this function. So for example, rotation ratio, for example, or let's call it degrees or angle ratio or so. And that will be transition, actually by transition dot animate float. And here, let me put that on separate lines like this. We first of all need to specify an initial value, which will be um, zero. Final value will be one. So we just animate this value from 0% to 100%. And then since it's an, inf in, since it's an infinite transition, we, we just start at zero again. And then we can just multiply our angles by yeah just the current percentage value here. We need to provide an animation spec, which is an infinite repeatable. We now need to import this um, get value function here, pressing Alt Enter. And in this infinite repeatable, we can configure our animation. So how it looks like. So we can say the animation, which is an animation spec, we can set that to a tween and just specify a duration, for example, which you could also pass here in the, uh, yeah, in the uh, function here as an argument. So duration would be an integer. Here in the tween, we could then say duration, um, duration millis is duration. And we could also pass some kind of delay if we would want that or some kind of specific easing function. Let's keep this simple and leave it like that. We could also configure the repeat mode. So right now it's at restart so that um, if the value reached one, it will restart at zero. You could also set this at uh, reverse a thing so that it goes back from one to zero and then from zero to one and so. Let's also leave this as it is and just use our modifier now. And we actually also don't need to say modifier dot. Instead, we can directly use our modifier since we get reference to this modifier here in this compose function. So what we can say is we use a so-called graphics layer, which can just be used to apply certain transformations, rotations, scaling to our composable. So we can say we have a graphics layer and we set the rotation Z. So that is the Z axis that goes inside of our screen and that's where we want to rotate around and we set this to 360 f so we have 360 degrees of course for full rotation and we multiply that by our angle ratio and that's our custom stateful modifier now if we now go up here where we have our red ball we of course don't want to make this a red ball now because then we won't see any rotation if it's just a rotating circle but we can swap this out now with rotating and say we set the duration to three seconds and then give this a background of let's say color red. So we just have a square, then we will see that it is actually rotating. And if we now launch this here on our device, then you will see that we effectively have a modifier now with which we can rotate any type of composable. So we can now very easily just apply this single line to make any composable a rotating one with an animation. And that of course worked with a lot more things. So basically any state that can change, you can make that a modifier. You can become very creative with that and actually save yourself a lot of code that you would otherwise need to repeat. That's especially helpful if you have some kind of custom design spec, for example. So some custom design guidelines for your specific app, then you could have modifiers for your design guidelines and easily apply these to any type of composable, basically to yeah, make it look like you want it to look like. So if you enjoyed this and and you actually found this interesting how you can customize your composables, then you also love my canvas course for Compose. With a canvas, you can make very custom animations, very custom design, you can draw some paths, you can make games with a canvas. And I have a full course about that where I show you basically everything you need to know to use a canvas in Compose to make custom UI. So if that sounds interesting to you, check the link down below, check out the course. And apart from that, if you enjoyed this video, 
and you want more Android videos, you want to learn more about Android, about mobile development, then uh, consider subscribing to this channel so you won't miss two videos that come every single week. Thanks for watching, enjoy your week, and I'll see you back in the next video. Bye-bye.